You're on. Hey guys, it's Sean with Integrity Ranch. We're out here at the Goats and Sheep. We got Isaac from Green Pastures Farm. Uh, Green Pastures Farm? Yeah, something like that. I follow that and the Green Pastures Ranching on YouTube, so I get them. Uh, got you. They get confused. But, uh, Isaac's here to pick out some goats. They're going to start a goat herd up there at Greg's place. So, trying it out. See, see where we're at. See if they can take care of some of their more woody. See if we can keep them in, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've we've about got the goat thing figured out, so I think you, I think they'll keep them on good enough food that mm -hmm. I honestly think you guys will be able to get them to one strand if mm -hmm. if you if you keep you know the goats with with the sheep, the goats will always be in heaven. Yeah, you know, and you'll be moving them enough that mm -hmm. the only time you'll have a problem maybe is in the winter when when it's the ground's frozen and and you're not shocking as much. But mm -hmm. well, you know. When it comes to goats, you know, you hear that they're pretty harder, harder to have parasites. It's harder to keep them free of parasites. But the way you're managing them, you know, yeah. I think you got one of the best goats. Yeah. That's in the state, maybe even in the country. Well, too, it's hard because, you know, people brag about having these parasite resistant, you know, goats in our Oklahoma, but parasite load in Oklahoma is way less than here. Even, even northern Oklahoma, they have way less. So, you know, you need to match where you're at. Yep. Um, but I've, I've done a lot of visiting with people with goats that claim they have parasite resistant goats and everyone that I've talked to at one point or another has, has been spot worming. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's where we've never wormed anything. You know, nature, mm -hmm. nature's gonna do the, nature's the best at selecting. You gotta be that predator. You yeah. Know? And that's what, that's what you gotta do to every animal, every species you got. If, yeah. If you want a low maintenance, you know. Other, I mean, or, you have to bite, bite it at some point because I mean the faster you just get rid of the crap you know you're gonna move on from there and have smooth sailing mm -hmm. but if you want it to take 10 years doing it a little at a time yep maybe it'll feel less painless because you're just you're spreading it out but it's all the same you know it's take longer and, you're, and you may even make it worse because you're prolonging that or you know you just buy from from good people which mm -hmm. the sheep thing you know there's some people that that are running sheep really good, but the goats, that's where when I started the goats, I didn't know, mm -hmm. I looked, I looked, and I couldn't find, and so finally I just decided to get started and be that guy, you know? Yep. And and now, you know, I think we have something pretty cool here with the goats, and hopefully it works yep. out for you guys, because yeah, that'll we're get- we're excited about it. That'll get the word out with the goats, because mm -hmm. I love having them around, taking care of the, the more brushy stuff. I love seeing what they did to the, you know, the trees in there, how every, every piece of underbrush was cleaned up, you know, and yeah. you can get in there. Then if you want to make silver pasture or whatever, you can get in there easier yeah. to work on stuff. Yeah, about, it takes about three years before they have, that stuff we've seen today, that's only two years. Okay. So. Um, before they actually peel it off. Three years, they'll, they'll pretty much have everything from about six foot down will be dead because mm -hmm. of every spring when they go you know the sunlight gets in in the early spring and those sprouts explode mm -hmm. and and they do you know they hit those over and over again mm -hmm. um they eventually you know that they kill it off but it takes about three years because you know it's a, it's slow They're, you know it's not like a it's not going to the roots and killing them off but with three years of taking every bit of juice out of them and all their leaves you'll get them one what's good about off. that is if it does take longer, at least you got, you know, it's, it's feed for your goats. And so even though yeah. you're wanting to get rid of it, it's nice to keep it around. So in some of our paddocks where, um, where we have more pasture than we have brush, the goats are kind of unhappy in those. Mm -hmm. And I took and cut some, cut a bunch of the trees about this high and they just, they, they explode and, mm -hmm. and sprouts. Mm -hmm. And, and now they're, you know, every time you turn them in there, the goats have that much more feed mm -hmm. and they're going to kill that off eventually. And they're about, you know, trees that big around, they're going to kill it off they're kind of on the edge of some swamps and so they're not in the way for brush hogging or anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in a hurry. I'll let them kill it off slowly. And then you'll go, you know, in a couple of years from now, you'll just probably kick those stumps right out after yeah. the goats. It'll be feed for that. And it's been, yeah, exactly. It's been feed versus mm -hmm. in, in certain spots, we have spots where, you know, we get in more pasture and the goats kind of get unhappy because they're mm -hmm. not happy out here on, on grasses. Right. They need some um, broad leaves. And stuff. That's pretty rare around here because most of our pastures are more brush and yeah. Lesbadiza and a lot of junk growing up, but yep. But there's spots where yeah, we don't even worry about uh, cut. You know, when we cut stumps, we don't spray them with or brush. You know, paint them because the goats. The goats are gonna take care of it. And I, you know, I've seen it 
That's nice too, then the less chemicals you gotta use. Yeah, well, it's just, it makes the process easier, you know, one less job to do when you're out there cutting a fence line or something. Mm -hmm. but, yep. Yeah, I'm excited to have you guys get some, of our, with some of our stock. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it. I Who think, knows, we may be back next year for some more if yeah, they, they think, work out so well. I think they're gonna jam up there, cause you guys, we got plenty of brush, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, you guys got plenty of brush, you know, and they'll, they won't be very much competition. I mean, mm -hmm. look, show over there, yeah, they're yeah. pulling down that, that uh, that's just an oak tree. They're pulling down the branch and eating those leaves. Look at that, climbing up on there like a... So when you put these, you know, these goats in with some sheep and move them, I mean, the sheep, the sh they're, they're not after the same forage, you know, the goats mm -hmm. are after the woody plants, the sheep are, out, sheep are after the forbs and and the legumes. They don't compete for forage as yeah. much. Maybe just a little bit over that. But it's it's about the same as cows versus sheep. You know, okay, they compete yeah. some, and and then the sheep versus the goats. Yep. Um, you know, I had an old guy tell me that cows are, cows are 80, 20, 80% 80 forage, 20% browse. Mm -hmm. Sheep are 50, 50, and goats are 80% browse and 20% forage, so. Gotcha. I feel like it's pretty accurate. I Sometimes I think the goats are, are more like 90, 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I'm excited. To, yeah, get 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 the word out there, hopefully. So, mm -hmm. thanks for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you would. We'd really appreciate it.